Hello, I'm Taegang Hong from FOSTEC. My research is finding the logic similar copies of convex polygons in polygonal domains. I work this problem with Singju Lee and Higap An. Then let's define our problem more precisely. Before I define the problem, I will mention convex. Left polygons are convex and right polygons are non-convex. Rights are not convex because of the pointed parts. Let P be a convex polygon with K vertices and let Q be a closed region with some obstacles with total and vertices. Then the goal is to find a largest polygon similar to P that can be inscribed in Q. In this case, P is allowed translation, scale, and rotation. Then I will mention some preliminaries. In this problem, we define the P distance with the convex polygon P as the following equation. In the figure, R is the farthest from P in P distance and Q, F has the same P distance from P when P is a sphere. P distance defines the edge boundary diagram in our problem. From now on, I will abbreviate edge boundary diagram to EVD. The EVD subdivides the plane into regions as the right figure. Each side of Q corresponds to a region of EVD and every square concentered in the region touches the corresponding side. For example, the blue square centered in the green region touches the corresponding edge site. When we allow only translation and scaling, P can be the largest in Q when P center is on the border vertex as the right figure. The edge delaunay triangulation is the dual of the EVD. From now on, I will abbreviate edge delaunay triangulation to EDT. A Brunei vertex of EVD corresponds to a triangle of EDT. So P is largest when P forms a triangle in the EDT of Q. Each triangle of EDT can be a candidate of a largest polygon. So we detect all changes of EDT to find a largest polygon. EDT changes when P rotates as the below figures. In the left figure, two dashed triangles in EDT correspond to two squares. So the EDT is the rectangle with a diagonal. When P rotates counterclockwise, the red diagonal in the EDT is flipped as the figures. We call this an edge change. The other case is label change. In this case, an edge of P and edge of Q touch each other when P rotates counterclockwise. In the label change, the vertex of P touches with the left edge of Q is changed. I will only provide the number of label changes without details and focus on edge changes. For finding a largest similar copy of P, the algorithm stores the detected changes in the priority queue. 
Then the algorithm updates EDT using the priority queue. While updating and maintaining EDT, the algorithm also finds all candidates of the largest polygon. Q and CADAM solving this problem in this time with the algorithm I mentioned earlier. To bound the loading time of the algorithm, they bound the number of the combinator changes to this. We did not apply as the inverse Ackerman function, which grows extremely slow. Shadil and Toledo gave an algorithm for solving this problem using parametric search technique of Megiddo. These two algorithms are not comparable to each other. If n is bigger than k, the algorithm of Q and Kedan is faster than Charlie and Toledo. If k is bigger than n, Charlie and Toledo's one is faster. In our study, we give a more tight bound for the number of changes, which is this. So, the learning time of the algorithm of Q and Kedem is reduced to this. As the following table, our result dominates both algorithms in the time complexity. Then I will mention how to count the combinatorial changes in the remaining part of the presentation. We found that the number of changes is n square for fixed k, but I will omit details in this presentation. While we count the number of changes for fixed k, we can obtain the number of label changes as k square, alpha k, and square. So the remaining part is counting the number of edge changes with respect k. Before explaining how to count the edge changes, I will mention some basic notations and settings to count edge changes. We call a pair of an edge change of Q and vertex of P aside a contact pair. We call a pair of a vertex of Q and an edge of P a point contact pair. The red marks represent the contact pair of each case. Then we contact with four sides of Q when an edge change occurs. We fix two contact pairs and count the changes containing the two contact pairs to count all changes. Then we add up the number of changes for all choices of two fixed contact pairs. Suppose that there is another contact pair C. When P is rotated at, by a fixed angle, the place and Size of P is uniquely determined, which satisfies three contact pairs C1, C2, and C. Then we define a function HC setup as the length of in the following figures. Definition of HC is different by the type of contact pair C2. Then the function hc is appeared as the following graph. If the change occurred with touches c1, c2, c, and c prime at the angle z prime, 
the graph of functions hc and hc prime intersect each other at theta prime. However, we don't need to count all intersections of functions. In fact, p is not inscribed in Q when p is too large. p is not inscribed in Q for fixed angle theta when h theta is smallest for all possible c. In this figure, the red polygon satisfies c double prime, but the red polygon is not inscribed in Q. Therefore, changes only occur on the lower envelope of the functions as appeared in the graph. Then, we only need to count the intersections on the lower envelope. The number of intersections on the lower envelope depends on two variables. One is the number of functions and the other is the maximum number of intersections for each pair of functions. The number of intersections of each pair of functions is determined by the edge change that occurred by the pair of functions. If the edge change has A side contact pairs and B point contact pairs, we call this AB change. In the figure, the edge change occurred by two functions, HC and H prime. There are four intersections when the edge change is two to change. In the other cases, the number of intersections is at most two. I will introduce the strategy how to reduce the number of two to changes. The first step is to divide cases of the fixed contact pair C1 and C2. If both fixed contact pairs are side contact pairs, we only count four zero changes. The figure is 2 to change, so we don't count this when C1 and C2 are fixed. We count this when C1 and C4 are fixed. Similarly, we only count 0 4 changes if C1 and C2 are both point contact pairs. In the other cases of edge changes are counted when C1 and C2 are different types of contact pairs. I will only explain the strategy of counting when C1 and C2 are different. First, we count the breakpoints of the row envelope for each vertex and edge of T. Then, Pi 1i be the lower envelope of functions of for contact pairs containing vertex vi. Then the complexity of pi 1i is m1i, where m1i is the number of functions for the vertex vi. The complexity of the function is the number of continuous pieces of the function. Let pi 2i be the low envelope of functions for contact pairs containing edge ei and bi be the number of intersections on the low envelope of hc for contact pair c contain ei. Then the complexity of pi 2i is m2i. Then we count the breakpoints of the low envelope of the union of pi 1i and we call it the low envelope pi 1. Also, we count the breakpoints of the low envelope of the union of pi 2i and we call it low envelope pi 2. Finally, 
we count the breakpoints of the lower envelope, uh, the union of pi one and pi two, and we call this pi. Then I will explain the technique to find the complexity of pi one, pi two, and pi. Let piecewise continuous functions g1 to gn have n continuous pieces in total. Suppose that the number of intersections of any two continuous pieces is at most s. Then the complexity of the low envelope of the functions is like this. You can see the number of intersections becomes larger as s get larger. By using the result of the previous slide, we obtain the complexities of pi 1, pi 2, and pi as following. The sum of m and d for all two fixed contact pair is k cubed and square, where m is the number of functions and d is the number of intersections. By summation of the number of breakpoints, of the low envelopes for all fixed C1 and C2, we can conclude the number of changes is like this. Therefore, we can find the largest similar copy of P inscribed in Q in this time and Kn space using the same algorithm as the previous research. Thank you for listening to my presentation and you can find the full version of the research in archive.